live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for the Modern Marketing Experience Oracle Show. This is theCUBE SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our two guests next are Ryan Boom of GVP Oracle Marketing, App Cloud, and Peter Isaacson, uh, the CMO of Demandbase. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. Thanks so, for having um, you know, I'll see Demandbase, you guys are in the data. Marketing Cloud, it's all about the stack now a change, a sea change in the marketing, moving into technology, certainly cloud. It feels a lot like DevOps, it feels a lot like words like agile, you know, iteration, fast, real time. Yep, yep. Data's at the center of it, is, gonna, is the conversation. And that's what everyone's talking about. And then integrating everything. So, what is the state of this modern, Ryan, you have a view there, the app cloud, the apps out there have to be differentiated. Yeah, but yeah. they also got to be working with other apps. Yeah, they surely do. But I think we, I think one great place to start with is just talk about the change of the role of marketers in an organization. And then why does the cloud matter? Why does what we're doing at Oracle Marketing Cloud matter? And why do our partners matter so much? I mean, I think the biggest thing, the biggest difference, you know, I'm a B2B marketing guy. That was my background. And the biggest thing that's really changed is that, that the marketer has a seat at the table. Yeah. And we, they haven't always had a seat at the table, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, they haven't had a seat with the CFO, with the CEO, with the CIO, at that same level driving strategy for the organization. You know, in many cases it was, hey, get more leads. Your job is get more leads, or your job is to build a nice brand or make some pretty pictures, right? And I don't want to minimize a lot of the great work that marketers have done to date, but they haven't had that seat. And now they do have a seat at the table. And when we talk about, like, well, what does that mean for an enterprise company? It means that we can provide a stack that allows them to meet their functional needs now and grow into the future. So it's not just Oracle Marketing Cloud as the stack, because we are a very deep and broad stack of functionality, but when we say Oracle Marketing Cloud, that inherently includes our partners, because our, our strategy is a partner ecosystem and Oracle Marketing Cloud together. That's how we mm -hmm. solve customer needs today. Maybe it's a single app solution, right? Yep. But tomorrow, it's not going to be a single app solution. They're going to have more data coming in. They want to integrate with their data warehouse. They have other applications, right? So start now, and we yeah. can grow with you. And when I say again, we, it's we, it's Oracle, and our partners grow with you. I mean, so you that's a big change. It used to be yeah. the marketing automation was kind of siloed. Exactly. It had an email tied to it, but now all this non-linear data opportunities, right. interactions. That's right is out there. That's right. So is that part of the dynamic too? It is, it is. And that's why buying from a stack solution where you have everything from a DMP to manage all of that data all the way through execution, right? That's why you. That's why it's great for customers to have that full solution. Because if you just buy a point solution, how are you going to handle the data? If there's not a data tool for that, a DMP yeah. or a data management platform, you're just going to hook up to another data warehouse? Yeah, that's probably not going to solve your problem, right? And so yeah. the data is a big part of it. So is the, seat at the, table, is, is the seat at the table both driven by the relevance of the value proposition of now marketing's taking with the apps, and or is it the data or both? I mean, because uh, now you're integrating, you talk about integration, yeah. that's a big deal. Well, I, you know, I think it's driven actually by business impact and the business impact that marketers are beginning to have um, across the company. And so much of that is being driven by technology, right? There's been so much innovation and so much great technology that's been introduced over the past three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. And they're not just fancy toys, they're actually fundamentally changing how marketers can actually represent their brand, get their value proposition out to customers that are going to matter most, and actually drive business impact. And I think, right. it's, I think it's that ability to drive business impact that is giving marketers that seat at the table. Because right. when you're just focused on click-through rates and MQLs and website visits, things like that. No CEO or CFO wants to hear about it, right? Data warehouse query, basically stuff's going on, yeah. what's going on. But once you can actually say, you know what, marketing uh, uh, contributed this amount to our business, we helped this, this type of close rate, we actually drove this amount of bookings, That's right. then people want to listen, then people are really well, interested. Let's drill down on that, give an example, because we had the Clorox CMO on, who's also on the stage, who loves technology, thinks that we're in a great time, but he's also like, look at the work their workflows have to change. So how they work yeah. 
is ultimately what they care about, right? They care about their customer, right? Yeah. So having technology for technology's sake isn't really his focus. He's like, hey, you know, I get a lot of stuff promised to me. That was one issue. But even with tech, if it doesn't, if it's not integrated how he works, it kind of sits and gets dusty. Yeah. So yeah. can you give an example of where that impact's happening and and where this uh, new new impact is? Sure. Uh, I, I mean, one one example is um, just within demand base. So we take an account based. Um, approach to all of our marketing and uh, account-based marketing is actually something that's very hot right now and demand-based is really the leader in it. Um, but our account-based approach means our target accounts are responsible for 80% um, of our pipeline. Mm -hmm. And marketing is actually driving 80% of our pipeline as well. Oh, fantastic. So that, when we're, when we're responsible for that much of what's happening on the business, that, again, getting back to the seat yeah. at the table, yeah. that has a fundamental impact on whether we're making our number each quarter. So you bring up a good point. I want to, I want to talk about that for a second, because I know that's your business, and I was just talking with uh, Louis Monaghan uh, before we came on, you saw that. We we're talking about this account base. You said it's hot, but also I'd also say that I'm, I'm hearing that it's not so hot in certain contexts, and I'll give you an example. I want to get your comments on this. There's a real trend towards persona-based. So in the old email days, a lot of companies have over-indexed on who you work for, not who you are. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is that that old email form-based capture destination passed to an analog sales process now is going on digitally. So when people are presented, you know, hey, you know, registration, they want to know who you are first, then the account. So account's important, I would agree, but now the dynamic's changing where it's not, hey, who do you work for, first question. Yeah. They want to get the one-on-one -on -one with the persona, so you have the, I'm kind of talking, kind of talking out loud here, yeah. but like, yeah. persona base is yeah. one objective, makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Account base, you want to organize it in a way to provide value. Share the insight but into what, what's the difference between those if, two? If you don't mind, is I'll throw conflict? something out and then uh, yeah. add on to yeah. it. I, I think what's interesting is now through technology, and you don't actually have to ask what company are you from. Um, before they fill out the form, we can identify what company right. you're from, and then not just what company you're from, but how big your company is, and what industry you're in, what the location is, what the sub-industry. So you can actually get, get all of that data even before they raise their hand, fill out a form, select a contact me, which is, uh, again, a fundamental So you're enabling in more persona-based interactions well, because you're automating the mm, account. It, 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 I would say um, what's interesting is that I think a lot of marketers um, about five or six years ago got very hung up on personas. Yeah. And what I would say is if all you've got to go on is a persona, then you don't have a lot to go on. Yeah. Personas have been very helpful in helping yeah. the company say, this is, this is our type of buyer, this right. is our type of customer, yeah. but they're not, but personas by themselves don't and help you the actually reach And also the definition of persona being kind of kind of and polluted, around, right? I mean, yeah, butchered exactly. and polluted, I mean, bastardized, whatever you want to call Peter's it. Peter's totally right about that, right? I mean, best practice is you do both. They don't, exactly. they're not, they don't fight each other, right? They're yeah. both great. Knowing your account, the account, fantastic, right? Because yeah. you now know something about them because they work, it worked for another account. But then when you start to look at the title, but what is that persona? What is the content you want to deliver to that title or persona? What yep. is their buying habits, all those things? A good marketer will do both. Yeah, yeah. they need Absolutely. to look at the account, and they They're need to look at the buyer. They're not mutually exclusive either. No, I mean, not at all. Blended data model at the end of the day, right? No. Absolutely. The more data you can get via tech, like say IP addresses, yep. like you guys do that. I know right. you guys do that, right? Yep. So right. Yep. that's a great way to say, hey, why even ask the question? Absolutely. That's good user experience. That's right. Then you could maybe that's focus right. on something else. That's right. Yep. Okay, so this again brings up more of the complexity question. So the other thing I heard from Kevin Alcoroy yesterday, and certainly on the keynotes, was the big Martech map. Everyone loves the map. <laughs> Zillion vendors out there. How the hell does a CMO make sense of all that? I mean, it's a, it's a night, I mean, well, half of them might even be out of, it's like the web 2.0 map in the old days. Like, most of them, you know, all are going to be gone or merged in or irrelevant. Well, so, what we're trying to solve for is the CMO doesn't have to worry about that map. I mean, it's complex, right? It is complex. And, you know, as a technologist, one would look at that map and it's like boil in the ocean. Let alone a marketing person. It's like, what is all this stuff? I'm just trying to get to know my customer better. I'm just yeah. trying to sell a product, right? Well, but in, with, with the marketing cloud, we're trying to take that away somewhat so they, the market doesn't have to worry about it. Because my team's job in the Oracle Marketing App Cloud is to partner with those leaders in each one of those categories, bring them into our ecosystem, yeah. help them build really tight UI-based integrations so the marketer now can say, hey, we love Oracle Marketing Cloud, but we have maybe this functional need that's beyond yeah. what you do out of the box, and we can provide two, three, four recommendations of partners that do that. 
So yeah. now the marketer doesn't have to go look at this complex thing and go, what are these words? Because I don't care yeah. about your categorization. I'm yeah. just trying to do something simple. And we try to simplify that so we yeah. can provide a much easier buy I'm a big pattern. fan of the yeah. Oracle Marketing Cloud because you know, in 20, 2014 I wrote an article on Forbes about this. It really has to be like a cloud, right? It has to be truly cloud. But interesting, you guys bought a lot of uh, technologies, and what's interesting is that the data layer now is the horizontally scalable component. Yes. Yes. So I want to ask you guys a question, because you've worked with Oracle, you're at Oracle, so I want to ask you the question. First of all, I love that architecture. I think that's a winning formula across yeah. the breadth of the portfolio. Thank you. But all the practitioners I talk to out there right now are struggling with this one concept. Do I highly differentiate my app, because with big data and the apps, there's domain expertise specific to the app, there's functionality specific to the app, yet I don't want to get caught into a data silo, right? <laughs> so I got to balance the prepackaged app functionality and differentiation with a much more horizontally scalable data model. So how do, you, how do you talk to those folks that are scratching their head, the digital builders out there right now saying, I got to do that. I, gotta, I have a lot of mishmash going, I got an email thing over here, I got, they have the map problem internally. Yep. So how do they, how should they think about their problem? Well, well do you want to take I, that I, since I'll, you are one of those kind of? Yeah, I mean, uh, and so does Oracle I, fit and, nicely into that with with the new marketing cloud? Well, I, 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 so I might take a different spin on this, but yeah. um, again, when uh, more and more marketers are taking an account-based view of the world, um, the advantage of taking an account-based view of the world is that you actually can identify specific accounts and then track those accounts from the very beginning of the journey, advertising, awareness, attraction, all the way through to um, your CRM system and pipeline and mm -hmm. closed revenue. Um, I think what um, we just announced with um, with Oracle and Kevin and the Oracle Marketing Cloud, um, account-based marketing automation actually takes that idea of integrating your data and making it more useful to the marketer to the next level within a marketing automation system. So in the past... You're federating the account concept across data sets, exactly. basically. Exactly, and just making it so much more useful for Oracle Eloqua customers to actually yeah, right. use what is really the central nervous system of all their marketing activities, right? Yep. Oracle yep. Eloqua, yep. and actually use that to push out account-based campaigns and nurture campaigns. Yep. But it's using consistent data across each aspect of your uh, of your funnel. Right. Yeah, and I think I think we when we when we have a good partner integration like this is that's not just a UI integration. There is that data layer yeah. integration, and we share data back and forth as part of those integrations. So the marketer can go to one spot and still choose the segment that they want to target. As an yeah. example, mm -hmm. they don't have to go to yet to another tool or another data warehouse to get all of that stuff. And yeah. so that's part of our strategy as well is still make it easy for the marketer, right? It's one yeah. tool to them, it's one product, it yeah. adds tremendous value, and we don't, we, we purposely try to stop this islands of data problem that we've had for years yeah. and years. We're not trying to recreate that one, we're trying to simplify well, that. Well that's been the a big problem, is that yeah. the, the yeah. silo data is really problematic because yeah. you got a lot of redundancies on a lot of things. Certainly yeah. account-based is a really critical field on, yeah. on all this. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think that um, getting back to the yeah. kind of the 4,000 companies and the confusion and how difficult it is, I, you know, that's another example of how just through the partnership that Demandbase and uh, Oracle Marketing Cloud have developed, we're making it so much easier for Oracle Marketing Cloud customers to actually say, you know what, I don't have to worry about 4,000 because the, the core pieces of my stack from Oracle are actually integrating yeah. into something that I'm going to use to target accounts yeah. like demand base, and it's just simplifying that yeah. decision-making process. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you're here. We, yesterday yeah. I had a chance to interview um, the founders, uh, uh, the, the founder, CTO, and president of Mintigo, because I wanted to get the VC back perspective because the question that comes up on, on the Oracle side is, and this is a question for you, Peter, is the ecosystem, is it real? Uh, certainly Salesforce, you know, Launched their ecosystem around like it's the you know the app app exchange as the uh, the be all end all. You guys, as I, as Kevin pointed out, yes, they have 900 in integrated par partners. Yeah. So I got to ask you, what's it like to be an ecosystem partner? Because as you have the breadth of functionality, as you have some of the database technologies, whether, whether it's engineered systems through the database into a data layer, what does Oracle bring to you as an ecosystem partner? Because a lot of people are watching, saying, hmm, maybe I should join the ecosystem of yeah. Oracle. What's the experience like? They help you get deals, you're making money with them. Yeah. I mean, are they all Oracle all the time? What's it like working with them? Yeah, so it's a, it, it's a great question. I mean, I think it's um, it's interesting because you can set a goal and say, you know what, we want to expand the ecosystem. We want to get, you know, 2,000 or 4,000 or whatever a number is, partners out there. But if you don't pay attention to the actual execution of that, right. if you don't actually integrate 
from a technology, from a marketing, everything else, then all of those are just meaningless numbers. Right. And I just can't speak highly enough for Ryan and the um, Oracle Marketing App Cloud team on how passionate they've been, how responsive they've been, how much they've just leaned into our account-based marketing automation. Product True partners. Launch. True partners. I mean, there is a ton of complexity launching a product under the best circumstances. Partnering with a company as big as Oracle and the Oracle Marketing Cloud, you get a little worried, like, how is this going to go? Is this well, just going to create- some functionality to the table, too. They bring a lot of Absolutely. Know, heavy lifting to the- <laughs> But, but, but uh, and without question that, but I would also say uh, just shockingly nimble in how quickly they've been able to just work with us, develop a marketing plan, organize their team, and just actually get help us get this product out the door in a really meaningful way yeah. that is at like literally from hour one of the launch is driving new business for Talk us. Talk about the, your strategy. I mean, my, my perspective just looking from the outside in is, is that it's not like it's a cattle car or people just jumping in the sponsorships. You pick and choose. I mean, it's, I mean you're not yeah. totally picky, but I mean, you pick the right partners. That's right. It's not like it's a that's clown right. car of partnerships. <laughs> I mean, it's like. <laughs> we, that's right, we try to keep away from the legit. cloud car. I like that, yeah. All the relevance, you look, yeah. at, you look for yeah. white spaces. You bet, but you, you bet. Look. So, so we really have a depth and breadth model, right? There are partners that want to integrate with Oracle Marketing Cloud that they might have a newer technology, they might not have market share, but yet they have something that's innovative. We have yeah. a low touch process for them to come in and get integrated with the system, yeah. but we also spend a lot of time identifying, you know, recruiting, managing, loving on, if you will, our partners yeah. that are actually, we have a lot of combined customers together, because that's really the starting point, right? If the man base has some great customers, we have some great customers together. The yeah. first t better together story is always working with a great customer together. Yeah. So we look for those types of partners. Yeah. And, and we look, just like you're asking about loyalty, right? We look for people that are also going to be loyal to us. You know, I would prefer yeah. that the partner spends most of their energy and <laughs> development dollars and go to market <laughs> dollars with Oracle Marketing Cloud than somebody else. And so we look for those types of partners. And you truly bring them into the fold. We do truly bring yeah. them into okay, the so fold. Okay, so I got to talk to Tim Brown all on earlier. He was pretty cool. He's sold Maximizer yeah. to Oracle. And he had an interesting comment, and I want to get your thoughts on this, Peter, because a lot of these venture backed stars, sometimes self finance, can't make it alone. Yeah. And there's a line where you got to say, well, Maximizer was kicking ass, so obviously, you know, they, and he said, we saw a, a point where, you know, we were a point solution. They and are. it was just natural fit to, to be acquired by Oracle. Same kind of business decision on the <laughs> partner side, because you got to balance capabilities versus going alone. Yeah. And, but you're still independent, so yeah. you're not yet bought into the, to the fold, which is always possible, but you have to balance that. Can you share how you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the, the first thing you got to do is you've got to focus on your business and kind of, you know, pleasing your customers, delivering the innovation that they want to see. Um, once you reach a certain size, which we are, we've been able to partner with some of the, you know, the bigger companies like an Oracle Marketing Cloud that actually extend our yeah. platform, extend our, um, our solution set. Um, you know, for, for us, it's really just a matter of Oracle keeping your head down. Oracle always gets to know you before they buy, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get you to say they're going to buy you, right? No, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's, up, that's up to them, but you know, the price is going to be pretty high. So, okay, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it, for us, it's just kind of heads down. We got to yeah. make uh, our, our, our own business successful, which we've yeah, been doing right. really, no, really I, well. I sat down with Mark Hertford yeah. in a in one-on-one -on -one interview in January, and I, asked, I put it right to him, and, and he was not shy. He, they make, Oracle makes M&A decisions They'll organically grow and they'll they'll do M and A. So they have no problem writing fat big fat checks, but they buy different kinds of companies. IBM buys tuck unders, Oracle buys scale. So you know always a different kind of criteria, yeah. criteria there. Yeah. Um, final thoughts on the ecosystem slash landscape. Looking forward, old way, new way. What are some of the things that jump out at you that that you look at as veterans and say? Hey, there's certain things that we can pretty much put the stake in the ground saying, that's definitely happening. You got to bet that as a premise. And given that, what are some scenarios that you guys see happening in modern marketing over the next couple of years? Mm. Yeah, so let me think, that's a good question. I haven't really thought that one through before. I think though, I think there are some table stakes, right? There are some table stakes in marketing. You need a good orchestration platform. Whether you're B2B or B2C, you need a great orchestration platform. I think there, the other thing that's table stakes right now or it's emerging to become table stakes is the importance of mobility or mobile marketing. You know, we're in the United States and other, other maybe Western countries, we're used to marketing, right? So, I mean, some email. So we went through the internet stage yeah. and then email showed up and we went through all of that mm -hmm. and then mobile showed up. There's a lot of parts in the world they, w they didn't get the internet. 
They went from yeah. not much to a mobile to phone mobile. Yeah. with carrier connection. Yeah. And so they missed that whole phase. And there's a lot of countries like this. And we're doing extremely well in those countries where it's a mobile first country, uh, marketing. But I think it's a matter of time, and it's not going to take very long, where mobile first is also here in North America yeah. I mean, and Facebook in announced Europe. their earnings yesterday, 15 billion in the quarter in cash just on mobile. Yes. That's significant. Now that's ad based, but if you yeah. bring the one to one experience down that's to mobile, right. that's yeah. it right. can be pretty interesting, compelling. That's right. Yeah. And, and I think that companies that aren't investing in mobile and maybe are resting on their laurels and email, <laughs> uh, I think there might be a rude awakening rather quickly. So that one's moving fast. Yeah. yeah. I think table another table stakes right now is the importance of data like you talked about. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, is a, there, it doesn't make sense to me at all as a marketer why I would buy a point solution that didn't have rich integration capabilities and a great data platform underneath it. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't understand why you would do that. Yeah, there's just the no logic to that. data is so important and to be able to do something with that data and the analytics on that data, right, to target more customers yeah. or more accounts using well, that I've data. Well, heard, I've heard right. some reasons why people do that when, and, and they're quite frankly, just you know, legacy financial. I got to write it off. Kind of things. It's not it's nothing to do with the tech. I, yeah. Hey, I bought this data warehouse yeah. with this product, and I spent boatload of capital on it, and yeah. I just can't kill it tomorrow. Yeah. So that they're in that kind of slow, you know, phase out on the on the uh, right. versus but, they, yeah. but as they're looking at a new platform, yeah, yeah. whether it's new or replacement, that's got to be part of the selection criteria, right? Yeah, is that data management platform? It has to be there. The lack of point solution is not a great story, and the lack of interoperability is another thing. I mean, interoperability and open platform is table stakes. Yeah. Because no one vendor will ever solve every functional need, and, and a customer doesn't want to get to a point with a, with a platform and go, oh, I can't do what my business requires because there's yeah. no way to integrate, there's no extensibility. That opens yeah. the key, that's why I asked the ecosystem questions. Most people are like, oh, Oracle, they want to control everything. Well, not really, you no. got 900 partners integrated, it's pretty damn good, so. That's right, that's um, right. Ryan, Peter, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insights, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for your time. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE, we'll be right back with more after this short break.